What's up people, still colour back and here for a new album review of the new Floating Point Pharaoh Sanders London Symphonic Orchestra Promises. Um, I'm super surprised and I'm super excited to do this review because I had absolutely no clue that Floating Points was going to work with Pharaoh Sanders and the Symphonic Orchestra or all three work together to create this um, album. Being a fan of um, Floating Point especially um, with his, uh, you know, Crush album of 2019 for me which was one of my top albums and also some of his previous uh, work and his um, influence or him incorporating jazz and also um, electronic music and uh, and sort of like um, uh, classical music uh, into his work it was interesting sort of to see him now work with uh, a jazz artist like Pharaoh Sanders over all the obviously over though uh, going in further to review and explaining it further this is uh, quite a sort of pleasant marriage because floating points does uh, incorporate a lot of you know jazz music and Going on about Pharaoh Sanders uh, now. Pharaoh Sanders, of course, is this uh, jazz musician that's been in the game since uh, you know John Coltrane. Uh, so that's fifties and sixties. And um, being a fan of the record, like Greetings to the Star, being a fan of ja um, jazz music, but haven't yet sort of uh, been able to sort of to fully listen to um, Pharaoh Sanders music. I was, I was, I was absolutely um, you know excited to sort of see the type of album this will be and uh to explain it the best that i can this on our first listen and also the subsequent listen is an interesting album um uh, because i mean looking at the album um all of it is um sort of titled in movement um uh, which i believe is a classical uh, music references uh with many sort of composers um in the past uh, utilizing that sort of um titled name and um the entire album uh follows these sort of like um song cycles with uh each movement uh essentially extending into one and uh listening to the album in the beginning um um <laughs> i was i was my uh, my ear that is um been sort of used to um listening to albums uh where the records uh do sort of change or there is a greater variation than what's offered on this promise album i was actually sort of thrown away by that you know um uh this album not only just that point but this album is also quite can be quite quiet and quite meditative and also sort of loud and um and uh challenging at points and um requires uh, one to actually listen with a tentative ear to sort of register the differences uh, within each of those movements and um, it's quite it is it is interesting uh, the way both uh, floating points uh, Pharaoh Sanders and London Symphonic Orchestra have constructed this thing so going in now into the album the start of the album sort of uh, begins with a sort of like beautiful sort of like uh, gothic um, keys um, which uh, then uh, Sanders saxophone uh, later sort of you know comes into sort of play and then it becomes sort of the prominent part of that movement and literally that melody uh, and also with uh, the sort of continuous interplay with uh, Saunders saxophone with other sort of movements is sort of is the sort of bedrock um, of the album and that was <laughs> and that was also part of the first listening experience which then changed later on listening to a more that kind of sort of uh, throw me off because what you get with the first is essentially what um, holds the album down but um, as uh, as the album progresses, um, the differences uh, then start to sort of uh, play a part in it. And then listening to more, that's for me when the richness of the album sort of stood out. The second movement then continues on um, where the first movement had uh, left off. However, uh, it continues with this sort of like um, this intensity uh, with the um, saxophone and this beautiful keys and then it ends on beautifully with this sort of synth line and that synth line then persists on to the third movement 
and it, it, it is quite quiet but it gets a bit louder um you know ending with the vocals and then the fourth movement um that's uh with saunders vocals that had ended with the third vocal sort of persist and sort of uh continues and again it's sort of this beautiful interlay between um the saxophone and the piano uh that occurs um with uh those with in the fourth movement and it's just interesting sort of to see the sort of different and the variation and that sort of then continues with the movement five where where in where um where it sort of uh, continues on for the fourth movement and um the saxophone instead then becomes the sort of prominent piece um of uh movement uh five and uh, this is just a beautiful uh bit uh where the sort of the synth sort of ratchets up and the sort of this like swirling interaction with the saxophone um sound the saxophone um during the fifth movement and then it all sort of sort of quiets down and it's this sort the type of sort of like feel and the um and uh, experience personally when listening to uh, the album is that of let's say of um, of of sort of like mystique. Um, actually, uh, scrap that. So this listening experience for me and um, knowing or understanding the type of um, saxophonist of Pharaoh Sanders uh, is, and also with the beautiful sort of like keys um and other instrument that is sort of that sort of play harmonically um with each other on this album is that album of a sense of like you know spirituality so the sort of like the universe and um you can hear it sort of beautifully with these like beautiful sort of like starry keys as well and you know the symphonic orchestra sort of harmoniously sort of um uh, what's it called interacting uh, with that and then with the movement six um, that's when the intensity that had been uh, prominent with other uh, sort of uh, movements within the album then sort of then ratchets up and then the orchestra then becomes this sort of um, prominent part and it's you're quite interesting how you have some movements where um, it might be Farrell's uh, what's it called um, saxophone or another, uh, or the or or orchestration of pop, but with this one, the orchestra sort of comes in as well. So, yeah, um, it's incredibly beautiful and it's incredibly uh, dramatic as well. And it's uh, it's interesting uh, that this album, as as a drama, if listening to it as a drama and the sort of um, listening experience that it does offer, that the sixth one becomes this sort of like. The dramatic element the sort of um high point and the movement of six sort of ends uh and or preceding the end of it there's sort of these swirly sort of synths that sort of plays beautifully uh sort of ends abruptly and then there's sort of the drop happens and um it's then sort of preceded with movement say seven which is again begins a little bit more quiet and that's sort of like a persistent sort of theme uh with this whole album is the um between the sort of quietness and the loudness between the sort of meditativeness of it and the um and uh, for the lack of a better word, uh, chaos. Actually, I believe, no, chaos is probably the correct word for this. And again, with Movement 7 as well, uh, beautiful sort of like um, synth lines that sort of then happen, uh, you know, in the middle part of the section. Again, we've got Pharaoh Saunders uh, beautifully sort of um, interacting uh, with the sort of swirly sync that sort of happened again. And again, it just, again, sort of plays within the sort of theme of the sort of the universe as well. Um, again, again, playing very much to, the, to playing very much to the type of artist that Pharaoh Saunders um, actually sort of is and uh, not to the sort of dancey, uh, dancey uh, sort of um, records and playing uh, onto the sort of this sort of mystique um, theme um, of the album sort of uh, I get sort of the hint of like the universe sort of sort of swirling um, swirling around now uh, talking 
talking about sort of movement eight uh, that is sort of defined by the sort of persistent um, long sort of um, key a lot of it sort of reminding me um, of um, talk talk um, record and yeah it's quite interesting sort of to hear the sort of influences um, I believe there's sort of like an abrupt ending on one of the movement as well that sort of remind me of one of the records of laughing stock as well so uh, it's interesting to sort of hear some of those um, influences being played um, on this album and the last movement is just defined by this um, orchestra and I believe Sanders um, saxophone is no longer um, in play and that sort of becomes the sort of prominent part again the sort of sense of chaos and urgencies at the forefront of it as well and then it all sort of just taper off and it's just interesting to um hear this um album as a whole so sort of to end this review i have to sort of say that this album is phenomenal i give this album a strong eight um it is quiet meditative but also chaotic and um challenging in bits and um it's just interesting uh listening to this album how on the first listen um it uh, for me was uh well not necessarily that it was challenging but it, it was quite um similar um seeing um you know the first move the, you know the product the production on the first movement being such a big part of all on all of the movements and obviously changing um ever so slightly as the record progressing uh that sort of sticking through and not me not me sort of expecting it uh, to be completely different but the more sitting back and actually listening um to the album and actually paying attention to the small variation and the small changes uh in the record that's when the sort of the appreciation and the richness um of the album really shone through and um this album is completely different to most album it requires extreme patience to sort of uh understand it but yeah credit to uh floating points Ferris saunders and london orchestra i can't wait to sort of see what else uh floating points um will be offering in this career um easily one of the best musicians out there that's doing it with Ferris saunders it is I'm happy that this is probably the first full-blown project that I've listened to him, not just tracks. And London the Symphony Orchestra, I believe I've heard some other sort of stuff that they've done with other people or, or other compilations and mixes, because it's actually quite hard to sort of uh, not hear on the, any of their composition, any of the, any of the stuff that they worked on, seeing as they've been sort of um, prominent for a very long time. Yeah, Easy and Aid, um, fantastic album. If you haven't checked it out, please do check it out okay so that ends our review for this uh, beautiful uh, album by Feral Saunders Floating Points and the London Symphony Orchestra guys do not forget to sort of follow subscribe and, and like um, our video we have many reviews and also discussions about music that will be coming up in the future and also please do uh, follow our Spotify profile because we have instrumental playlist and also other uh, playlists so this album which is quite similar to our instrumental playlist uh, which follows which has uh, records that are quite similar in terms of the sound as in this um as in this album so thank you for listening and see you all next time